Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have another older game in my What Is It and Is It Worth It game review series. In this video I will go through the various aspects of the game, trying my best to avoid spoilers for new players, and give examples of similar games as well as my personal opinion as to whether I would recommend the game with a thumbs up or thumbs down and if I personally enjoyed it. I won't be giving a number rating to the game as many other channels do, as I find this to be a very arbitrary way of rating games, which like any other entertainment is completely subjective, and instead I prefer to give enough info for you to make a decision on your own if you would like to go forward with picking up this title for yourself. Innocence, more specifically the loss of it, is a very fitting name for this title. Today we look at Plague Tale Innocence. This one was released in 2019, being one of the more recent games I have featured in the series. The game was developed by Asobo Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. We're going to take a look at this one, avoiding story spoilers as much as possible to find out exactly what this game is and if it's worth picking up for a first time player. Answering the most important question I seek to find in my review series, is this game right for you? So settle in as we seek to answer that question, as well as finding out what is Plague Tale Innocence. So the basic premise of Plague Tale is to tell the tale of Amicia and her brother, as well as a handful of other supporting characters in their story which will take place in late 1348 Aquitaine in France, during the Hundred Years' War. To be extremely brief, the Hundred Years' War was a series of conflicts fought between England and France over a period of roughly a hundred years. There were a number of contributing factors to the conflict, however for the purposes of the game all you really need to know is that you're living in France, which is at war with England, who then invades in the territory where the game takes place in. Although the war is very significant to the time period and the overall world building for the game, the real world particulars do not factor in much to the quest of the main characters, and having a historical knowledge of the time period is not necessary to enjoy the game. The other major plot driver for this title is the affliction of Amicia's younger brother and its connection with the plague which has ravaged the country. This will ultimately be of key focus for the entire story of the game, and you will uncover the mysteries associated with this as you play through. This game is a third person title which is extremely narrative driven. There are also some limited RPG elements with crafting better gear, but for the most part it's really a story game. The gameplay itself works well for the title, mostly relying on sneaking elements with options later on for more violent confrontation, however at its core it uses the gameplay as a way to bring the player through the storyline. Though the main character does get stronger with her weaponry and killing enemy NPCs becomes a necessity later on, it is really a great progression where you begin strictly hiding and running away, transitioning to having to kill in very specific instances, and concluding the game where you essentially kill enemies at will. Truly a compelling underlying story of the loss of innocence that's built within the mechanics as you work your way through the main narrative. The graphics are really quite good. They do have some typical aspects you would expect with a game published by Focus Home. Think maybe Greedfall. However, I felt that they actually did a better job with this one. Most likely this is due to the move away from the large open world environments and focusing in on a smaller scale, highly tailored story experience. The NPCs look good, the environments are great, and it all comes together to form a great backdrop for the story to unfold within. It's actually really difficult to speak of any further features in the game without giving away important story points. Without going into too much detail, during your adventure you will be introduced to a handful of other characters. Though your main character through the majority of the game will be Amicia, there are specific instances where you'll take control of another character to do a specific task, as well as using the skills of others by giving orders to complete the objective. It all really flows together quite well and they feel very natural as you come to those points in the game. I 
I found that the sound was really quite good. I feel the dialogue for the most part was well written and delivered, and the soundtrack was good to keep you within the tone of what the game was going for. Other than that, the effects are fairly standard with nothing that stands out as a sore spot. Hide! Well, where the hell are they? Come on. We've surrounded the area. They were here a few minutes ago. I want to take the knight's challenge once more. Leo! A hunting dog is not supposed to lose its hunter. Where have they hidden him? Let's go. Now. Where is mommy? Shh. Oh my god. Louise. You think it's funny making me run like that? Uh, I miss you. Please. Uh. We need. We need to move. Don't, don't, don't look. Can defeat me. I fought in two wars, you know. So, what would I compare this game to? Instantly, I was brought back to Senua Hellblade. Definitely a very strong story driven adventure with a focus on telling the tale and pulling back a bit on the gameplay side. Not that the gameplay is bad, it's just less of a focus of the game. There are also puzzle solving features built in, though less developed than in Hellblade. Other examples could be Call of Cthulhu as both are story driven and horror related. Though this one does have fantasy elements at the core, it does feel that it's more rooted in historical reality rather than the science fiction or horror fantasy nature of the Cthulhu game. So now that we've looked at some of the features of the game, we reach the point of my review where I give a more subjective look at my personal experience with it. Please keep in mind that the following is just my opinion of the game, and if the features and genre seem interesting to you, you should definitely check it out for yourself, as not all games are for all gamers. The game that you hate might be the next gamer's all-time favorite, which is one of the things that I love about gaming. There's always something for someone out there. So now the big question on Plague Tale Innocence. Did I enjoy this game personally, and do I recommend picking up the title for a first time player? The word is yes, go. Yes! 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 Yes, almost certainly if you enjoy deep, story-driven games. This one really hit the spot for me, with compelling storylines and NPC interaction that kept me hooked all the way through. The gameplay is fairly simple and easy, However, it is still quite fun considering the story focus component, and compared to some story heavy games, in this genre the gameplay was actually pretty good. The only real complaint with this one is the length. It's very short. You could probably complete this one in a day if you focus on it. Personally, I took my time and played through over a few days, but expected it to take much longer. There are 17 chapters, with some taking an hour, some slightly more, and some that are over in a matter of a few minutes. As long as you go in with the right expectations and not anticipating the typical open world, multiple hour odysseys we have been getting in many modern games, then this one can be great for you. I actually found it to be a bit of a nice change to go from the seemingly common issue of many modern open world games, of being draggy with nothing of interest in between quests, to play something that was highly scripted which is packed with content in every corner. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Plague Tale Innocence. Have you played the game already? Let me know your own thoughts on the game down in the comments. Did you agree or disagree with my personal opinions on it? I'd love to hear your takes on why or why you didn't agree with me as well. Also, please consider giving the video a like here if you did enjoy it, and think about subscribing to the channel as well. I create and upload a variety of gaming content, and would love to have you join the community and help direct the future of the channel. Your support really inspires me to continue creating content. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch today, and until next time, take care.